I mean, I, I do wonder, just like we've been talking about, if there's any ways to push that to its limits to explore further. I don't like leaning, this This is why I'm bothered there's not more science and psychedelics, is I haven't done almost, I, so I've I, I eaten mushrooms a few times, uh, allegedly, but that's it, you know? And I the reason I don't do more, the reason I haven't done DMT is because it's illegal and, and it, it's like not well studied. And it, you know, I, I'm in those things, I'm not usually at the cutting edge, but I'm very curious and it feels like there could be tools to be discovered there, not for fun, not for recreation, but for like encouraging whether you're a linear thinker to go nonlinear or, or it's nonlinear to go linear, like to, to shake things up. You mentioned Dan Gable. The idea of Dan Gable on psychedelics is fascinating to me because he's such a control freak. I mean, he that I would control. show up for. That, that would I'd show up for. But like yeah. so much of these psychedelic experiences, it feels like is are letting go. That's right. You don't want to resist. But and that's supposed supposedly where the growth is in in giving oneself over to the process. And that's for people who are like master controllers. He's one of the greatest coaches of all time. It's fascinating to see what that battle looks like of resistance and then of letting go. Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I can't wait to. Uh, to, uh, to, to see where these studies take us. Well, it's clearly happening. You know, I've asked, there. I have a couple of colleagues at Stanford who are doing animal studies. I've asked around, you know, it's there's a lot of discussion in the neuroscience community about what the perception of a laboratory is if they uh, work on psychedelics. I mean, I I have to tip my hat to the folks at Hopkins. They are pioneers. Yeah. And as um, Terry Signowski, he's a co computational neuroscientist down at Salk says, I don't think he was the first person to say it. He says, uh, you know how to spot the pioneers? They're the ones with the arrows in their backs. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's an unkind world to a scientist that's trying to do really cutting edge stuff. My colleague, David Spiegel, who studies medical hypnosis, it's, he's got dozens of studies now showing that hypnosis can be beneficial for pain management, anxiety management, cancer outcomes. And it's finally, you know, at the point where there's so much data, but people hear hypnosis and they think of stage hypnosis, which is like the furthest thing from what he's doing. And I think mind body type stuff, hypnosis, uh, respiration and breathing. I think the hard science uh, walk into the problem is always gonna be best to get the community on board. And then it's up to people like Matt and um, to really, you know, take it to the next level. And as I say, not Keezy out of the game because Keezy basically was taking too much of his own stuff and he started dressing crazy of banana hats. And like, you see him, he had the, the magic bus. So, you know, the day, I, so like the day I start driving to work in the magic bus, that's the day I lose my job. Well, you're gonna, uh, I'm not into buses or, or, or wearing you, fruit. You, but um, you're gonna get a phone call from me, and I hope you do the same for me. It's like, uh, you, like, uh, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> well, what's interesting yeah. earlier we we're talking about the challenge with David that you're about to do. Yeah. I mean, that is a psychedelic experience of sorts because you're biasing your mind towards a pretty extreme neurochemical state, and you, you don't know what you're gonna find there. And that's kind of the excitement, I, at least for me as an observer. It's like I want to know what what the experience is like afterward. I want to know like, how was it? I mean, I'm sure you're going to get something. Like you said, you're going to grow. The question is how. And not resisting. I mean, it's the same as with a psychedelic experience. It's like not uh, like giving yourself over completely to the experience and not resisting and going through the whole mental journey of whether it's anger or excitement or exhaustion, the whole thing. It, it's, uh, I mean, uh, that's it the entirety of the process that David goes through when he does his own challenges and so on is that whole journey. He finds purposely like missile seeks the limits of the mind that, that whatever, whenever the resistance is felt, runs up against it and then goes to the full journey of going beyond it and seeing what's there on the other side. Well, stress has these two sides, the limbic friction of being tired and needing to get more energized. That's one form of stress. And then there's the feeling too amped up and needing to calm down. Yeah. The, the, the typical discussion around stress is one thing, but it's all limbic friction. It's just that when I say limbic friction, I'm, that's not a real scientific term. I just mean the limbic system wanting to pull you down into sleep or wanting to put you into panic and you using top-down processing, using that evolved 
forebrain to say, mm -mm, I'm not going to go to sleep and mm -mm, I'm not going to freak out. And those top down control mechanisms are, I mean, when those get honed, that's beautiful because then you really, you're increasing capacity for everything.